Okay, so welcome back. Now, in the first two videos, we talked about developing and planning this um, real-world electrical engineering simulator software. And in the part two that we just finished, we talked about developing a general framework for the software and breaking it down into little blocks of functionality. And what we're going to do in this video is we're going to kind of dive into one of those blocks and we're going to look at the devices and see how we might um, simulate those, how, how we might um, design those in C Sharp with uh, Visual Studio. So let me, um, here's our simulator, let me run this. And as we talked in the previous uh, videos, uh, it's basically a time step simulator. And what we're going to do in this video is we're going to look at these um, circuit breakers, these square boxes on either end. Again, I explained this in the previous two videos. So I encourage you to look at it. But we're going to um, look at designing these in code. And um, the nice part about these devices, as I mentioned before, they are real world devices. So they really lend themselves great to object oriented programming because they are objects. And they have functionality or methods and they have properties. And it will be very nice and easy to um, model these um, as actual devices. So again, we're going we're gonna, to, in this video, look at the device modeling. We're going to look at the circuit breakers and also start to look at these automatic switches, which are similar but a little bit different. So um, the circuit breaker. Uh, I've got the general circuit breaker in this dashed box, and I've broken down the basic um, functionality of that circuit breaker into four parts, all right? At its core, it's basically an open, closed, or on-off switch, just like the circuit breaker in your house or the light switch on your wall. It's just an on-off switch. But with the circuit breaker, it's got some additional uh, logic in it so that it can sense uh, if there's a problem on the circuit and then open the circuit if it needs to and then also close the circuit to try and see if the uh, problem went away. So there's basically four blocks uh, or four methods in this circuit breaker. And we can start thinking of this as a circuit breaker class that can be used in any electrical engineering simulator software. So we can th think, you know, it'd be nice if we could build a circuit breaker class, reuse it in other code, and make it as generic as possible. So we've got our, our basic open closed switch. We've got a current sensor which again is used by any circuit breaker you get. It's going to have a current sensor in it, even the one in your house. So we need some methodology to simulate current sensing. And then we also have an open timer. Um, so if it senses current, after a certain amount of time, it's going to open up the, the switch because it says, hey, there's a problem. I sensed current that was over a certain value, so I'm going to open up the switch. And then there's a reclose timer, which does the opposite. It says, okay, I've been open for five or 10 seconds. Maybe the, the fault or the problem on the circuit has gone away. So I'm going to try to close the switch and see if it has gone away, which means the current sensor doesn't sense that big current anymore. And I'm going to try and restore uh, voltage to all of my customers. So again, there's like four methods in this circuit breaker that we can start to, to visualize how we can implement it. So um, how are we going to do each of these functions or methods? Well, in the real world, the current sensor actually senses electrical current. However, in the software world, there is no electrical current. So you have to kind of figure out a way to determine if in a certain circumstance or certain configuration, if the current sensor would sense a fault. So what we're going to have to do is make some kind of what I call a topology check, which uses data from the rest of the devices and says, well, if this device is closed and that device is closed and the fault is here, then this circuit breaker will sense it. We talked about that in previous videos, so I encourage you to, to look at the first two parts. So we're going to need a topology checking um, logic in here. Um, as far as the timers, um, they're basically system timers that, you know, if you sense a fault, you start the timer or continue the timer. 
And after a certain amount of time, the timer expires and does something. And same for the reclose or the close timer. All right. If it's open, uh, it, it, it starts timing or continues timing and then closes the switch. All right. So those are the basic functionality. So if we're going to implement that, we got to think, well, the topology checker depends on the other devices on the system. OK, so this circuit breaker d depends on whether this switch is closed and where this fault is located. All right. So I can't do that locally inside this circuit breaker. I need to have information from the rest of the system to see where what the status of the other devices is. So I need some external data. We'll call it system status data as an input to this current sensor. So I'm, I'm kind of modeling this as a block that does something. It's got an input and it's got an output. And the input is status of other devices. It does its topology check based on that status and then determines as an output, either I will start the open timer. I see a fault, so I'm going to start the timer or not. OK, so then the open timer input is that that logic from the sensor and its output is an open signal. So if it has timed out for the open timer, it will open this switch. It will send a signal to the switch to open. OK. So again, it makes it a lot easier now if we have inputs and outputs and methods, we can start to see how we can uh, do this in C sharp code. And then the reclose timer is the same, but it can use just local status. All it needs to know is, am I open? If the circuit breaker is open and the timer has timed out or is it still timing, um, I know what to do. I just need to know, am I open and is the timer timing? And if the timer times out, I send a close signal locally. All right. So now we've got a pretty good idea on how we can lay out this circuit breaker device logic. We can have a circuit breaker class. We can have three methods. Uh, we're going to need some external data in terms of system status. And we talked about that before as a static controller that keeps track of everybody's status. We can use data from that and then we can uh, do our topology check. But we're going to probably need some topology check logic that's kind of complicated. All right. So that's kind of the basics of the circuit breaker model. So what about this, the automated switches? OK, what about these guys? Well, as we said before, they're kind of similar. And if I jump between the MOD and the circuit breaker, you can see the logic is about the same. The difference is the the motor operated switch has a voltage sensor. OK, the circuit breaker has a current sensor. This has a voltage sensor. But again, it just depends on, for example, if this switch is sensing voltage over here, it depends on whether this circuit breaker is closed. So again, you're doing kind of a topology check. So again, this is going to need external data from the system to determine, you know, what's the status of the breakers and everything else. It will do its own topology check based on whether there's voltage at its, at its sensor. And then it will do the same thing. It will start an open timer or it will do a closed timer. All right. So if you draw it out like this with simple diagram, you get a good idea of, you know, how you can make simple input output methods and also how the the two devices are very similar. At the end of the day, they're all quite similar. So now we can start saying, well, maybe I can use one topology check logic that works for either the circuit breaker or the uh, motor operated switch. And then you can also say, well, if these are similar devices, I can think about using interfaces and make these all um, uh, use an interface. And then I can just cycle through each of these at every time step and it tell it, OK, tell me the status. All right. OK, so now that we have a general feel for the design of this circuit breaker device and also our uh, motor operated switch device, um, let's take a look at some code uh, that kind of implements that. 
So here is our, here's my simulator software, and I'm looking at the, what's called the breaker class. And this is the, um, the implementation of what we we're just looking at, the circuit breaker. Now, um, there's some stuff in here that isn't implemented yet, um, like this I notify property chain, just ignore that, and the event handlers, those don't exist. Uh, that's in case in the future we decide to, you know, if, if any property changes, it will automatically update the UI and that kind of thing. Um, but basically, there are two portions of this that I want to focus on. And the first thing is the internal methods. And we said before that there are like four um, basic functions or basic methods in the circuit breaker. So let's take a look at the implementation. And you can see there's one, two, three, four uh, methods that are being implemented here. So um, now we can start to see what these things are doing. Um, I've got a fault sensor, which is the one that senses how much current is flowing. And we said that's going to be using, um, doing some topology checking using some system data. So I've got a fault sensor. Then I've got a trip timer, which is going to basically say, okay, if I see a fault uh, and I'm not already timing, then start the timer and then I will trip when the timer expires. And I've also got the reclose timer. So if I'm open, if the circuit breaker is open, um, start timing or continue timing for the amount of time that we've uh, set. And then it will close and try again to see if the fault has gone away. So this is the basic functionality of our breaker class. And you can see it's pretty straightforward. And the nice thing is, for the most part, we can just go write a, a in this case, a breaker class and implement it and not have to worry about the rest of the software, except where we're going to need to gather some data from the controller um, that has the status of the other devices. Okay, so basically four internal methods, ignore the event handlers, um, and there's going to be a bunch of properties. Now, um, I've got um, properties here. I've got static and dynamic properties. I've got, you know, basically I'm numbering the device. I've got a UI location for the device, what type of device it is, what are the buses on either side. We're going to need to know that. But I've also got some setting values. How does the user want, uh, you know, how fast does it want to open? Um, what's the open time? How many times does we want it to reclose and try to see if the fault's gone away? And then what are the settings that the user wants um, for closing, right? So there's basically status and um, setting values. And then there's dynamic or timing values. So as it goes through its operation, there's a lot of data we're going to need to tell us what is the dynamic status. Uh, how many times has it tried to reclose? If it's been over a certain amount of time, we're going to say, well, we're just going to give up and keep it open and not try to reclose anymore. Um, a Boolean, is it, is it uh, closed timing? Is it trying to close? Is it open timing? Um, what's the status as a string? What's the status as a binary, one zero? So there's a bunch of stuff. I'm not going to go through the details, but you get the point here. There's a lot of um, status information we're going to need, both static and dynamic. But basically it comes down to we've got these four methods. Now the check status is going to be the entry point. So when the controller asks this device, hey, what's your status? This is the entry point. It's going to, for each device, whether it's the circuit breaker or the automated switch, it's going to say, it's going to call this check status method, and then it will do its internal checks to find out its own status. So now if I go and look at the, um, the switch, the automated switch class that I developed, it's very much like the circuit breaker or the breaker class. And as we said before, they do very similar things. They've got a bunch of properties, static and dynamic, and it's got um, internal methods. And in, in the case of the switch, it's a little bit easier because it's not doing the complexity of the circuit breaker, but basically it's very similar. 
And you can see I am um, using this eye device so that these are interfaces with the breaker and the MOD. So later on, I can just cycle through each device, not caring whether it's a circuit breaker or an MOD, and uh, ask it to check its status. So the, so the um, controller, the system controller, can go through and, and ask each device. And here is the eye device, which basically has very similar um, functionality to each of the devices. So um, that's kind of a general overview of how we're going to approach these devices. And uh, in the next videos, we'll get into some more detail on um, these and some of the other components. So if you like any of these, please um, hit the like button and the notifications and subscribe. Uh, let, let your friends and others know about these. Otherwise, take care and have a really good day. Thanks.